Recording in progress. Good morning. I'm sure this is like church. Everybody will come whenever they get here. And, uh, but it's not like church in that the front row is actually full. <laughs> so uh, my name is Ed Wilmington. I'm uh, still a part of the Brem Center. It's great for me to be back a part of this today with a lot of my friends and String Quartet and uh, uh, September, who is now an ordained pastor. Yeah. Angelus Mesa Presbyterian Church, right? If you look at her Facebook page, it doesn't say M Div, it says M Diva. <laughs> if you are it, you wear it, right? All right. No, no. And uh, Eben's here. I'm going to talk more about Eben and uh, Me Day and January and Simeon Sham and Ivan Wong, all the great people that mean so much to the Fuller Chapel community. It's great for me to be a part of, uh, we've spent a lot of time together over the years, all of us. So Julie asked me if I would host a, a short uh, concert ahead of uh, the chapel part of today to honor Mark and Janet. And so I'm really thrilled and happy to do that. You know, um, I remember um, 
March of 2013, I was sitting about halfway up over there, and it was the day that Mark and Janet came in and they announced that he would be the next president. And can you put that first picture up, please, that I've got? And that was after the, after the chapel that day. Mark had a little bit of a receiving line, and I got a hug from Mark that day. And if we had known the things that were going to happen between that day in this room and this day in this room, nobody would have believed us, would they? Mm -hmm. But uh, we're here, and I'm honored to, to be here as a part of this day with you, Mark and Janet. So uh, we've got four pieces of music to play in this little concert. We're going to start. Mark's a very eclectic kind of a person musically. Did you know that? So we're going to start with very classical things. Bach, Brandenburg Concerto, one movie. And, and you know, if you follow the history of the Brandenburg uh, manuscripts, it's really fascinating. One of the stories of which is there was a librarian who had the manuscripts in his coat trying to get them out of Germany on a train during World War II, and the train got bombed, and the people all scattered into the forest, and this guy saved the Brandenburg manuscript in his jacket <laughs> running through the forest. And so they're going to play one movement of uh, the third Brandenburg.
that's a lot of notes. <laughs> so that's, that's one part of Mark's appreciation style. Next, we're going to turn to Eben. Eben uh, is a graduate and is now the director of music for the chapel, director of jazz ensemble and other things at Westmont College. And we're very proud of uh, everything that he does. And his contact with Mark over the last couple of years have been through the podcast, the conversing podcast. And there's a little musical theme that, that starts that. Anybody know that little thing? Well, Evan's going to do a jazz improv on that theme. <laughs> We've always joked that Eben's hands just kind of land on jazz chords. And we wanted to develop an app that would help us analyze them because we can't. <laughs> um, so Julie asked if I would include a couple of pieces that I've written in this little concert. So we've got two pieces to finish this time. The first is called Jubilant Fugue. And I chose this in my programmatic mind attaching it to Mark. If you know what a fugue is like, it's got a musical theme. And it moves around from instrument to instrument, goes high, low, major, minor, you know, it goes all over the place. But there's always this common theme. So that's a fugue. Then over here you have Mark, who, <laughs> who has a theme to his life, you know. Uh, if you, uh, five minutes into any sermon and you hear justice, right? The J word. It's always right here for Mark, the J word. So uh, my, my little imagination is that on January 1st, uh, Mark actually probably will be going, I made it. Uh, <laughs> it is finished. The battle is over. <laughs> but in my mind, he's going, oh, my justice theme. I can do it here now. I can do it there now. I can do it in minor now. I can do it high and low. So as you think of uh, Mark on January 1st and his justice theme, think of it in the context. So today it's going to be the jubilant justice few.
So I want to take us back now to May of 2014. And uh, if you can put the next picture up, please. Uh, many of you remember, were you there at Paz Naz Church when um, uh, Mark hosted a conference? And uh, this was that year's chapel group. You see Julie in the front row, and Simeon Sham to her left, your right. And Simeon is now the uh, worship pastor and other pastors at Epicenter Church here in Pasadena. We're glad to welcome Simeon back uh, to this uh, time. You know, he um, began as an intern there when he was a student, and they were smart enough not to let him go at Epicenter Church. And so he's still there, a highly valued uh, pastor at the church. And, and um, you may recognize other people. Jerome Blanco was playing drums with us, and, and Stratton Blaze in the back was playing bass and so forth. And it was kind of a grueling conference. You put the next picture up. This is the way, way we really felt. And, <laughs> and um, Simeon was definitely sleeping at that point in time. But uh, yeah, thank you for showing those pictures. But you know, um, I have two or three memories, three memories from that conference. Uh, one was, uh, Julia will be here a little later, but I can tell the story on her now. On the Saturday morning, we had a re really early call time, and, and Julie was late. And she got a ticket speeding to get to the rehearsal. And she even told the policeman, there's this guy, Ed Wilmington, who's going to be really mad at me when he <laughs> said she still got the ticket. But you know, in, in, Julie's, in Julie, the way Julie does things, she, she contested the ticket. The policeman didn't show up, and she didn't have to pay. <laughs> <laughs> Only Julie, right? <laughs> the second thing I remember is uh, we sang, uh, How Great Thou Art. And you know, the last verse goes, um, when Christ shall come, with shout of acclamation, and take me home, with joy shall fill my heart. Well, our guest that year that, that Mark brought in was Nicholas Thomas Wright, commonly known as N.T. Wright. And we thought it was cool that Mark could call him Tom. And, and so after we sang How Great Thou Art, he got up, and he very nicely in his British fashion uh, took us to task theologically on referring to heaven as home. And we all went, ooh, okay. Uh, so ever since, Julie and I, ever since we, we have a song that says something about home and heaven, we go, is N.T. right listening and watching? <laughs> and so I've thought, you know, we should sing uh, When Christ Shall Come, a shout of acclamation, and take us to a new heaven and a new earth somewhere where joy shall fill my heart. <laughs> and then, and then we, we would be good with right in his theology. Third thing about that, back to Mark and Justice. Uh, there was a justice theme to that conference, and Wright had just done his multiple uh, commentaries on 1 Corinthians, and that was part of it. And I was choosing music for the conference, and I was really upset because I couldn't find something the congregation could sing related to justice. And so I picked the Nettleton hymn tune. We normally sing it, uh, um, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. And I wrote the words to God of Justice, Love, and Mercy for that conference that we could all sing. And... Um, and it worked well, and, um, and we've sung it here at Fuller um, ever since many times. And it started at that conference kind of because of Mark's emphasis on justice. So in 2017, 18, I was working on another project, and uh, the God of Justice lyrics seemed to fit, but the style of the, the tune didn't fit. I needed something more buttoned up British than Come Thou Fount. And so I composed a new tune for that, and I decided to name the tune Laberton so that Mark would have a hymn tune named for him. <laughs> and so he does. And uh, therefore it is. And, and uh, if you could put the next picture up, please. So uh, it's been delayed a couple of years because of COVID, but I've been wanting to publish this arrangement for choir and orchestra. So you see it there, God of Justice, Love and Mercy with my name and then tune Laberton underneath <laughs> there. So this will be published in the spring for people to uh, sing. And they can not only know of Mark as a preacher, but they can hear a tune that is Laberton. And I have a, I have a little picture here to give you. And, and then um, <laughs> uh, a couple of months ago, finished a collection of hymns. And uh, the Laberton recording is on this. So Mark, here's something to hear. And remember yourself. You know. <laughs> So, um, so we're going to play a, during our worship time in a little bit, we're going to sing the original version, version of, of God of Justice. 
But now we're going to play an instrumental version of the Laberton tune of God of Justice to end our, our concert time. And Mark, I just say from me, and I'm sure for all of us, whether it's classical or jazz or a fugue or buttoned up British, we know you will point people to the God of Justice wherever you go. So thank you. Well, wasn't that just a wonderful beginning? Uh, let's just give another round of applause to our musicians. And, and Ed, thank you as well. Well, what a, what a joyous occasion uh, this is to be able to celebrate uh, Mark and Janet in this way. Um, we've already had a celebration with the board uh, and senior leaders uh, celebrating Mark's and Janet's tenure here. But we really thought it would be important for the faculty and the staff to also uh, participate in a wonderful um, celebration like this. And what a wonderful start. It's a joyous day because we do get to celebrate in this manner. It's a sad day in that we won't have Mark and Janet around to do this in this way again. But it's also joyous because we'll be seeing you again, we hope. And we're also very, very happy that you're able to move in the direction that you want to move. Uh, 
I serve at the pleasure of Mark as uh, Chief Operating Officer and as Dean. And I, Mark, I remember uh, when you asked me to work with you more closely as we tried to move the seminary forward. Uh, there were a lot of dinners, a lot of breakfasts, a lot of lunch. <laughs> Uh, during which time I got to know Mark a lot better, your dreams, your aspirations for the seminary. Uh, you asked me to provide my gifting to combine with yours. Uh, it was a remarkable time uh, during which I got to know you a lot better uh, and learned to trust you. But I learned to trust you because you first trusted me with a lot of your own personal dreams and aspirations. And isn't that the way it works? We learn to trust because others first trust us. And we learn to love because others love us first. And that's a lesson, Mark, that I'll never forget that you reminded me of. So again, this is just a wonderful celebration. Um, there's going to be lots of chances later uh, for many of you at lunch um, and maybe even online um, to give your personal appreciations to Mark. So we look forward to that as well. So, um, Mark, from the bottom of my heart, I can't tell you how wonderful it has been to serve with you and um, look forward to maintaining our friendship into the future. I would be remiss if I didn't say that there were others who helped put this together. Too many to name. Uh, I have to start with Dana Van Dalen and Julie Ty. And also B.J. O'Halloran was very active, as was um, Alexis Abernathy and Brad Straw. <laughs> so I look forward to the rest of the program. What a great beginning. And I'd like to invite Alexis, our chief uh, academic officer, to lead us in prayer. Thanks so much, Ted. My heart is just overflowing. The beauty, the artistic beauty, so powerful. Thank you, Ed. Thank you, musicians. And Mark, that reminds me so much of where and I first met you, the Brim days, and how beauty was lifted up in joy. And that's a wonderful memory. And we live it out in different ways today. So it is such a blessing to honor Mark and Janet at this moment. And it reminds me of a hymn. I'll say a few lines from it. Now thank we all our God with heart and hands and voices who wondrous things hath done in whom this world and fuller community <laughs> rejoices. Let us pray. Spirit of God, you are with us now. Open our hearts to you and to one another as we worship you through the stories we share, the songs we sing, and the prayers we raise. Do what only you can do and bind us together as one. Make us a community set apart by the way we love you and one another. Receive our worship today, O oh God. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us continue in worship. Please rise as we sing this song of worship. Divine, love divine, all love's excelling, joy of heaven to earth come down, fix in us your humble dwelling, all your faithful mercies crown, Jesus, you are all. Come back. 
did Jesus born to set thy people free from our fears and sins release us let us find our rest in thee Israel strength and consolation hope of all the earth thou art dear desire of every nation joy of every longing heart President Laverton, 10 years ago, you left a notable pastorate to become our fifth president of Fuller Seminary. But the pastorate never quite left you. It is who you are. It is not all of who you are, of course, but it is core to the unique presence and quality that you have brought to your tenure with us. During these 10 years of extraordinary change in academia and in the world, God knew that Fuller not only needed a president, but also a pastor to guide us and shepherd us and lead the way. I have always admired the way that you can work a room, especially before and after chapel. Your accessibility and approachability as president, no less, are just unparalleled. And you can talk to anyone about any subject, and it is a marvel to see. On behalf of the staff at Fuller, thank you for stopping for us, for seeing us, for knowing our names, for talking with us, for being interested in our stories, and fascinated by who we are and what we are doing. Thank you for noticing and centering our contribution to fuller success. On behalf of the chaplains, for Brenda and Ines and Andrea, thank you, Dr. Laberton, for valuing and championing 
our ministry here at Fuller. I remember the first time you invited us into your office. I was thinking, oh my God, I'm in the president's office sitting with Mark Laberton. What in the world am I doing here? <laughs> kind of like what I'm thinking right now. <laughs> and from that day on, you invited us not only into your office, but into your life and heart as well. Among the many privileges the chaplains will have to serve the Fuller community during these years, there will be none greater than being invited to pray with you and for you. It's been our honor. On a personal note, I will surely miss you. I have to confess, one time I was sitting behind you over here during chapel, and you opened your Bible for a minute before you went up to preach, and I had to sneak a peek. <laughs> I thought maybe he has some notes scribbled in the margins or something underlined, or a post-it with his main points on it. Nope, <laughs> just the Bible, just the text. And today I felt compelled to let that secret out for all of us, <laughs> even though we still don't know quite how you do it. I will miss sitting under your preaching and receiving your benediction, I hopefully one last time today, from Ephesians 3. And despite the inexplicable way that Fuller can sometimes be, I will miss the reassurance I have always felt knowing you were at the helm, that in the room where the big decisions were being made, you were there, and your voice was there, representing the very best of Fuller and your love for the church and your hope for the unfolding of God's kingdom in our midst and in our world. As we say farewell to you against the backdrop of Advent, like Jesus, thank you, Dr. Laberton, for giving us the gift of yourself as the greatest gift I think a president can possibly give. May you and Janet feel loved and appreciated for your immeasurable, immeasurable impact on Fuller. And may you both walk into your next chapter together held in the grace and joyous embrace of Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen, amen. and amen. God bless you. I do have underlined notes and many words in front of me. I'm BJ, if you don't know who I am, in HR. Um, hello to our staff and our faculty online and to those here in Travis Auditorium. It's such an honor to be here. Um, it's an honor to have worked with Mark uh, since he began. So it's been a while, and I took a walk through email memory lane. <laughs> After an initial email exchange about I-9s and W-4s, <laughs> HR, new employee, the first real email of substance I received from Mark Laberton, the Lloyd John Ogilvy Associate Professor of Preaching, came in 2012 and was a simple thank you and encouragement. Then in June of 2013, after Dr. Laberton was named elect, he sent an email to all staff employees which read, when I think of the staff of Fuller, I picture faces of many dedicated and hardworking people some of you have come to know, some of you I've come to know well over the four years that I've been on the faculty. And others of you, I have yet to meet. As I start in this new role as president, I'm eager to make a personal connection with each of you, and I have a plan to try to do so. I will add, each of these emails included the classic signature line so often seen in emails from Mark, sent from my iPhone. Mark is a communicator, a preacher, a pastor, an encourager, and a leader. I imagine him typing out countless emails and texts with one finger, sending messages to employees and others around the world while traveling in an Uber, or waiting for his plane to depart, or possibly in the middle of running errands on a Saturday. Right, Janet? <laughs> However, these two emails the surprise encouragement I received and the affirmation and commitment to no staff 
summarize my experience of Mark over the past 10 years of his presidency. Mark sees and recognizes staff, knows our names, and pays attention to the smallest of details that matter to us. He has picked up the phone and called a staff member on many occasions to say thank you, to offer sympathy during a difficult time of loss, or to send a departing email off well. This leads me to Mark's commitment and grit. It's not an easy time, it's not been an easy time to be the president of Fuller Seminary, and made even more difficult because of his affection and care for employees. Having served Mark through his entire presidency, I trusted that he would lead through the best days and the challenging ones. And I had confidence that he would not send me in to have conversations that he was unwilling to have. And of course, Mark's humor. We've been through it all, and my favorite moments are when he cracks a smile and lets out a great wit or an exasperated tone. That levity brings humanity back into the room in an instant. Those two are moments of encouragement because there is important work that we as staff do. In fact, missional work on a global stage. While Mark keeps pointing us to Fuller's purpose and the reason for its existence, he does so through the personal connections that began to develop when he first became president. Mark, thank you for your personal and professional support. I am one of many, and your care, attentiveness, encouragement, cheerleading, constancy, prayerfulness, and at times, just showing up have made all the difference. Thank you for serving Fuller and for loving staff. I have been blessed and will miss you and Janet very, very much. Thank you. I am humbled to be able to represent my faculty colleagues in the School of Psychology and Marriage and Family Therapy. And I'm sad, <laughs> humbled and sad. We are so grateful to you, Mark. Um, you began your presidency with a unique connection to the SOP MFT because you were honest from the very start about the fact that you'd actually been in therapy, <laughs> that you let us know that you had firsthand experience of the healing that can happen in the therapy room. That's a unique connection um, for us, and we saw you take that connection as no small thing, and you reflected that through your ongoing awareness of the SOP MFT and the ways that our ministry contributes to the kingdom of God. With that in mind, I was trying to figure out ways that these words could really reflect the heart of the SOP MFT, and I thought that one of the most powerful parts of therapy is actually being seen being seen by another, being seen for our experience. So I'd like us to reflect together on ways that you've been seen by the School of Psychology, Marriage and Family Therapy. And I don't mean psychoanalyzed. <laughs> or some of my colleagues might have done that. That's not what I mean today. So we want to let you know the ways that you've been seen, and we want to bless you. We have seen you dream. From the moment you started as president, you have dreamed of Fuller being a place to, make, to do more for the kingdom of God. You dreamed of ways to expand the reach of Fuller scholarship. You dreamed of ways to expand the resources to support students. And we saw you dream of a new campus embedded in the city of Pomona, a campus that with an outward-facing ministry to the city and a campus of unique beauty and space. You also have dreamed of an institution with a center for justice and equity. And you've dreamed of ways to keep Christ and the evangel at the heart of all that we do. We've seen you dream. We've seen you hold uncertainty. You mentioned last week in chapel about a J. Well, you have the extraordinary capacity to be a P in ways that I think many of us are amazed at in the Myers-Briggs. The years of your presidency have included so many unexpected challenges. As a trauma therapist, I won't review them all, <laughs> lest, lest we trigger each of us. 
Um, but who could have imagined the array of institutional, ecclesiological, national, and global crises that could happen in a 10-year period? We have seen you remain open, discerning. We've heard you, seen you gather input from faculty. We've seen you listen to the pain. And we've seen you allow opportunities and directions to unfold. We have seen you show courage and humility. One of the pro most profound memories that I have of your presidency and leadership, Mark, was during the baccalaureate protest and the conversations around black students' experiences at Fuller. You were not perfect, and many others played important roles in those meetings, reflections, and the work for change. But we saw you stay present in the places of pain. We saw you receive the protest, and we saw you move towards courageous conversations. We saw your humility for the mistakes that have been made and the need for a non-defensive posture. We saw you. In that humility, we have seen you serve. In a presidency that was unexpected, in times that were unprecedented, all these things we have seen and so many more. And we of the SOP MFT, we bless you. We bless you with dreams for what is ahead. May God grant you a vision for this next stage. Dreams that are grounded in your belovedness as a child of God, but expansive in ways that they perhaps they've not been possible as president. We bless you with joy and contentment in this new liminal space. May God's continued grace and presence lead you in the day to day without unnecessary crises <laughs> and into a fullness of life, whatever is next and we bless you with courage. May God give you the courage you need for any new challenge, the courage to stay open and receptive, the courage to speak, the courage to stay silent, the courage to continue to live fully into the person that you have been created to be and in the community that you've been given. All God's richest blessings to you and Janet. Hello, Mark, and hello, Fuller community. I am sending this note from Helsinki, the capital of my native land, Finland, where I arrived yesterday with my wife, Anne, and winter has arrived in here. It's a great joy and privilege for me to send uh, this greeting to honor um, and acknowledge the wonderful leadership that Mark, you have provided for us during the past almost 10 years. There are so many features in your leadership that I would like to acknowledge. I would need much more time to do so. Let me highlight here something that I think is so extremely valuable and uh, beneficial to Fuller, to me as a colleague, to whole faculty and the students, and that is your pastoral leadership. You are an academic leader of um, highest quality. You are a great administrator. You are an amazing fundraiser, and many other attributes could be added to the list. But in my estimation, having observed you uh, first as the faculty member and subsequently as our leader, what really strikes me and which I find so very valuable is the fact that you are a pastor. You have uh, provided us an atmosphere in which uh, prayer, spirituality and catering uh, for uh, spiritual needs has been integrated into the vision of highest level academic research and uh, academic uh, pedagogy. It is uh, a wonderful uh, example to our students about the way theological education for ministry in various global settings 
may be best uh, done. It also is a reminder to us, your uh, colleagues and your friends, about the need to seek um, the face of God and on top of all mundane commitments to keep in mind what is uh, most important to us and that is uh, seeking uh, the kingdom of God first. So you have embodied what we used to call a few decades ago mission beyond mission. Thank you so much. Uh, you are greatly appreciated and you are greatly loved. Beloved friends, today's scripture is Micah 6, 8. This verse is central to Mark's ministry and life. We will receive the verse in Korean, Kiswahili, Spanish, Indonesian, and ASL. I will begin by reading it in English. Receive these words. He has told you, O mortal, what is good and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with our God. 사람아 주께서 선한 것이 무엇임을 내게 보이셨나니 여호와께서 내게 구하시는 것은 오직 정의를 행하며 인자를 사랑하며 겸손하게 내 하나님과 함께 행하는 것이 아니냐 Ame kuonyesha yaliyo mema e mwanadamu Bwana anataka nini kwako ila kutenda kwa haki kupenda rehema ya se te ha declarado lo que es bueno. Ya se te ha dicho lo que de ti espera el Señor. Practicar la justicia, amar la misericordia y humillarte ante tu Dios. Hai manusia, telah diberitahukan kepadamu apa yang baik. Dan apakah yang dituntut Tuhan daripadamu? Selain berlaku adil, mencintai kesetiaan, dan hidup dengan rendah hati di hadapan Allahmu. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We invite you all to stand, friends and family, as we enter into the official version of God of Justice, Love and Mercy.
Well, it's really, really a, such a joy to be part of this today and to have this final time together in the context of worship. I can't think of a better way of framing all that we're doing. Our whole lives, our existence, our purpose is fundamentally worship. And it's worship in every part and aspect and dimension of our lives. It's present in, in every relationship. It's meant to be part of all of our work. It's meant to be in the most mundane of things and in the most glorious and exalted and beautiful things as well. So thank you for being here. And thanks for all those who made this time together today possible. It just means so much to me. And I'm very, very grateful. You know, when I think about the word justice, the reason that it's so significant is that it's really a word about God's desire for rightly ordered power. That's what justice is. And what is the gospel? It's a gospel of rightly ordering power. Sin is disordered power. It's about its destructiveness to do ill to us and to each other and to the earth itself. But all of that is meant to be rightly ordered by the justice of God, the rightly ordering, caretaking, wholeness bringing, right relationship affirming reality that is God's character. God saves us so that power will be rightly ordered in our hearts and minds and souls and strength. It's meant to show up in all of our relationships so that then what manifests as the beauty of God and the goodness of God is the justice of God as we try to steward whatever power has been given to us. And as we attend to the abuses of power in the world, because those are the violations of a God of justice who understands that rightly ordered power allows human beings to flourish, but disordered power can undo us, can maim us, can abuse us and inflict us with so many circumstances that can do us in. So what is Fuller's mission? Fuller's mission is to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ, who is a God who has come to offer his whole life for the sake of rightly ordered power. To be Lord as the one who reigns with justice, not with egotism, not with narcissism, not with abuse, but with humility and mercy and kindness and gentleness and the capacity to stand into all the places of pain and do works of mercy and kindness that reorder reality so that the earth and we as human beings made in God's image and that the church of Jesus Christ around the world can be a flourishing manifestation of that reality. Amen? Amen. That is why we're here. So when you're given the job of being a president, a title that I've, I have had before in earlier, you know, kind of like grade school offices and in uh, the president of the student body in high school and that kind of stuff, you know, I've, I've carried the name, but only for a, a little bit and no one ever called me that. And soon after I was given the title, I was quite clear that I didn't really want the title to be the name that people used to call me. I think there's advantages to that, mostly about relationship, which is primary for me. Um, there's disadvantages to not having carried the, the, the mantle of president, because I do think it's meant to be about how does a leader hold and steward the power of Fuller. That's really what that title is representing. How do I preside, as a president does, how do you preside over the reality, in this case, this educational institution, this community of faith, this embodiment of the body of Christ around the world in all of its diversity and makeup. And to preside over that is to steward what is a miracle. You know, in many worship services, the most natural thing for us to do at some point in the service is to stand and pass the peace. Well, in a moment, I'm going to ask you to stand and pass the thanks. Because whatever else has happened in this past nine and a half, ten years, it's happened because we have all here in this room, others who are not here today, others who are not uh, who are here online but not present physically, we have shared together in this work. It has been crazy, okay? I mean, it's been an insane period. It's been fraught with more things, sometimes per day, than we could ever even imagine. That is a lot, and. The thanks is not just that we weather that, but really all of you, faculty and staff, have stood into this time with your own expressions of courage and faithfulness and humility and thoughtfulness and generosity and generativity 
Those are amazing things. So before we go any further, I have a few more words I want to share. I'd like you to just stand and take a few minutes to just move around the room and pass the thanks.
let's uh, come back together if we could. Just before you sit down, though, I'd like you to stand up for just a second. Um, this is like the arc of, a, of an end of a, of a period of time. And for those of us who have been around, there's lots that we carry in our body. And so I just thought some kind of shake-off experience for just a minute, <laughs> where we just like in the way that whatever, whatever we would find meaningful for our body, that we would just like shake it off and say, okay, we're done with that. So please feel free to just like have your shake-off moment. Let it just, uh, you know, get off of your hands. Like, realize it's a different period. That's the past. Now we're moving forward. Oh, my gosh. Uh, okay, then. Please be seated. So I want to just share a few more uh, words of thanks. Um, first of all, I want to thank, uh, above all, really, I want to make this first, not last, is Janet, my wife. <laughs> Simply impossible to imagine these years uh, without her support and love and encouragement. So please, Janet, thank you so very much. And thanks to the team, uh, I, again, I'm not going to go through lots of names, but I uh, just want to acknowledge the senior leadership team uh, and its extraordinary gifts over these recent years and the, the way in which we have uh, sought to work aggressively, deliberately, thoughtfully, creatively together and to do so with our faculties and with staff as well. And I'm just so, so uh, in debt to all of you who have been sharing in the close circle of trying to lead this institution in a, a, in a pretty uh, exceptional season. So thank you all, uh, SLT members, so much. Please join me in just uh, giving thanks. I also want to thank our faculty, um, again, for the reasons that we've already heard rehearsed, but which we could go lavishly long in describing. These have been difficult years. And uh, they've been difficult years under lots of internal and external pressure. And the fact that you have been dogged and faithful and earnest in your pursuit of what is best for Fuller, what is going to hopefully make a way for Fuller's future to be one that's thriving and healthy, one that's integrated. I'm so thankful that together uh, we have affirmed that we need to be a listening institution in everything that we do continuously. It's the first priority of our strategic plan. And that we're committed in, in to doing that uh, deliberately rather than simply listening inside our own echo chambers. And I think uh, for some, that has been a greater stretch than for others. But for all who have done it, it has really given us, I think, a fresh perspective, a set of perspectives that we are able to learn from and gain from and hopefully uh, take advantage of as we understand how to integrate those things into Fuller's life. I do want to say thank you to each of our two schools. When I started, there were three. Now there are two. Um, just one of oh so many things that have changed. Uh, it used to be that it was kind of singular and you could describe each school as just a simple word like theology or a hyphenated word like intercultural studies. Um, but, uh, but then it became SMT, School of Mission and Theology. And then likewise in SOP, it, it started as SOP, but now it's ended as SOP MFT, which is its own great enhancement to that name. And in in those two name changes that have happened, I'm just, uh, I find great encouragement because it seems to me that, that it holds the significance of, of some of the labor that's gone on and what's really behind uh, those name changes. I also uh, want to thank the staff. I remember um, in my early tour of the campus when I, uh, through with BJ's great help, ended up meeting with every sector of the campus uh, and we had these little gatherings trying to understand what each department and office saw Fuller as being and doing, where, where its challenges and gifts were, where we needed to work hardest, where we were the strongest. That, those lessons, which are still in notes that I just yesterday uh, packed to keep, actually, not to throw away, uh, those notes were, have been 
a continuous encouragement and challenge to me over these years. Because while the names and the details might have changed, the categories still remain. They're the categories that any institution has to see as just continuous iterative improvement. That's your goal, that's the desire. And I'm grateful for the distance we've traveled, even while I'm very aware of the distance that there is yet to go. I want to say uh, a particular thanks uh, to two people who have really assisted me throughout uh, this time. First, Roseanne Lombardi, who has been such an assistant, uh, primarily in relationship to the board. She is the, the primary person that holds all those responsibilities. Let me just say that's a rich field all of its own. And uh, we started with the board. Diminishment is, a, I guess, a gift of mine. Uh, we've moved from 43 board members to 28. Hallelujah. That has been uh, a really, really good thing. And uh, Roseanne has, uh, in recent years, been the one that has uh, been the person that's guided all of that. So Roseanne, thank you so, so much for that. And I also want to thank Mandy McIntosh, who I think is seated back there inconspicuously in the back. And if you would please stand just so that we could have a chance to see you. Mandy is really the, the holder of my life, my schedule, my, uh, my decisions in many cases, the, the, the things that I've done, the places I've gone, the coordination of all the endless details that are part of the president's office. Uh, and likewise, Mandy, honestly, uh, just an extraordinary gift of your diligence, your accuracy. I think, quite seriously, I was, I was thinking about this this weekend as I was, again, traveling, and thinking about, um, I think there's only been one time in that whole time where there was any detail that was missing, and it was quickly corrected, and it changed that moment. And but it was all a reflection, Mandy, of that accuracy and diligence and spirit. Finally, it's your humor. Um, because she's English and because we've lived there for, for a while, uh, there is a connection of just the delight in your Englishness. Uh, we, we live in a building called the Montana. Uh, it's the home that, where the Goatleys will live as well. Um, but Mandy, over all these years, insists on always calling it the Montana. And, <laughs> And so I always feel more regal, really, in that, in that moment. And uh, in so many ways, Mandy, uh, I just can't express my thanks adequately. So very, very grateful to you. Uh, I know time is rushing on, so let me just conclude with a couple of final comments. I, j I feel enormous gratitude. Sometimes it has been said about Fuller that people arrive with joy and celebration and they leave. Uh, with ill spirits. That is not in any way the way that I am experiencing this. Um, this feels to me, as I began 10 years ago, I knew that my presidency would be in, an in-between presidency, that it was between whatever has been before, which was rich and wonderful in so many different ways, and whatever the future would be. And it was going to be the ending of that arc because it would just inevitably, by age and circumstances and otherwise, be right to move into a new season. That seemed about like a decade's worth of work. <laughs> details to follow. Um, <laughs> and the details to follow are their own story. But in the end, um, the arc of, of uh, finishing this time as president, not because the job is finished, but because my season in the job is finished. And I feel freedom and joy in that. I feel like this is what I believe God had indicated early on. I believe that, uh, that those two words, freedom and joy, which God had given me as part of the call to this job, have been at times um, almost like a tease. Seriously, God, freedom and joy, 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 um, freedom and joy, freedom and joy. Um, and and at times, it has felt like, um, like a waiting. At times, it's felt like uh, it's vividly present. And freedom and joy have been part of this season, even in the midst of all of its, um, its great challenges. And now, with the selection of David Goatley as the next president of Fuller, whom I have come to know and feel very, very confident that he is going to be an outstanding president for Fuller, 
who he is in his character, who he is in his theology and his spirit, who he is in his churchmanship, who he is as a leader, who he is as a person among people, is going to bring so much to Fuller. And now we've spent hours and hours and days and days together, and I feel such a great sense of hopefulness. So the ability to hand off the baton uh, to his position and to him personally is just a great joy. When I was uh, at the farewell for Richard Mao when he was after finishing his extraordinary and wonderful years as president, there, were, there was lots of speech that would often be said, you know, you're stepping into big shoes. So that night uh, I said at, at my moment in the, in the grand banquet that we were having, I said, um, I have a, the biggest announcement really of, of the night. It turns out Rich Mao is keeping his shoe. <laughs> um, and furthermore, I'm bringing my shoes. And, and I feel quite comfortable that my feet belong in my shoes. And I have tried to live uh, as the president that I can be, which is only the kind of president that I can be. And that does include being a pastor president. And, and furthermore, um, David has his shoes. And I invite you and urge you and encourage you to receive him deeply, trustingly, confidently, and yes, as partners in ongoing, serious, and challenging work, to be able to do that together, because this is the way that is a community in Christ, in a world straining toward the hope of rightly ordered power, that the power of his presidency, the power of your life and work and your con contributions and your voices can be manifest together in a work that's going to enable us to provide so many good gifts and may it be so to the glory of God. Amen. Thanks. I guess we're learning. Because <laughs> I couldn't miss this. And I haven't rehearsed with them, so... Here it goes. <laughs> Would y'all rise in body or in spirit with me and sing this song you know so well. Sing it prayerfully. Sing it lovingly. Sing it as a reminder that God is indeed faithful always. And it's to be celebrated. Let's worship God together.
spending service. And so we wanted to take a few minutes for all of you and online to engage in some prayer for Mark and Janet Laberton. So I'm going to invite you to come up here, Mark and Janet, and have a seat. I'm going to push the, ta- the chairs real close together because you're a team. And I'm going to, va- in a moment, we're going to pray in the sort of international and global way that we often pray around here, which is we all pray at the same time, amen, out loud. Now, you don't have to do it. You can pray quietly in your heart that's your tradition, but we're going to invite you to unmute on Zoom and also to turn your cameras on because we're going to put your faces up here so people can see you as we're praying, and we're going to just start in a moment, and we're just going to ask you to pray and bless and send Mark and Janet, and when that starts to calm down just a little bit, I'll come in and pray the final prayer there for this moment, okay? So I invite you to, to reach out your hands. And reach out your hands on Zoom, and let's bless and let's send together now. Oh, Father God. Thank you so much for Mark and for Janet. Thank you for all that they've been just wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for Dr. Laberton. Thank you for the legacy of his grandmother. Thank you for the way that you for the way that you chose them, justice for him, and that you placed them in exactly the right place. We cast for the thing being pastors and beautiful place that longing because of other pastors in our lives. Father, I pray that you would bless them and that you would find the great purpose of their lives. I pray that you would bless Fuller in this season of its life. As they go, Lord God, in Jesus' name, I pray that you would be But only you, you will always be walking with you. And always turn there. And on you, we pray for in the season, in the season of... Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for the life, ministry, and model of Mark and Janet Laberton. Mark has led us, inspired us, seen us, challenged us, guided and corrected us, and spoken truth and life into our community. Mark and Janet have offered their lives as living sacrifices to you through this ministry here at Fuller. Lord, we thank you for Mark in the way that Mark would want us to by centering you, O God. For you have been faithful to us through Mark. It is by the power at work within Mark through which you have been accomplishing your work, O God. Mark and Janet have sacrificed, given, held, contained, strained, and stretched these last 10 years. They have embodied your self-emptying love. And we are grateful to them And we praise you for using them as you have. Your faithfulness has made their faithfulness possible. So as we say farewell to our president and our friend and our mentor and our guide and our pastor, or better yet, see you soon, we entrust the Labertons into your care. We pray for happiness and joy to be ahead of them for wisdom and guidance to be beside them, and for grace and truth to be behind them, pushing them onwards into your goodness and your service. We know that you will always love and protect them wherever they go. And we pray selfishly, Lord Jesus, that they will always know that we here at Fuller hold a special place for them in our hearts. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, And all God's people said, amen, amen. Thank you. Let's rise one more time as we sing Grace Thy Faithfulness one more time together.
Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen again. Amen. You only did half of it. It's amen again. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Please take your seats. Um, in this season, there have been a lot of conversations about, our, about who Fuller is, about our identity, about value propositions and things like that. And part of the reason why these conversations are so difficult is because there's something about Fuller that is not in books, it's not in just the classrooms, it's not in the offices, well, kind of it's in the offices, but it's in the people. And Mark, it's not just people like you for a very, um, in a very real and powerful way, it's you. You have been fully present. I am grateful for the ways that you and I have personally uh, interacted and uh, for the blessing that you've been in my life. But I think all of us would acknowledge and what we've been trying to say in our scripts and in the things we try to write down and say is that you've been fully present. In the good, you've been fully present. In the not so good, you've been fully present. When things were great, you were fully present. And when things were extremely challenging, you were fully present. And so we as a community, we want to say thank you for, um, I think Cynthia said it best, but for the tears that you've cried, for the scars that you carry, for the joys that mark your mind, we thank you for all that you've done and being fully present with us over these last nine and a half to 10 years. <laughs> Thanks, Dwight. And I'm an Enneagram 7 and I avoid pain, so I'm not processing this till January. So I don't have words for you right now except to summarize. And I want to invite you both up. Join us down here. Here, come over here. I think the best way to summarize your presidency in one word is that it's been a real home run. When the giants come to town, it's bye-bye, baby. Every time the chips are done, it's bye-bye, baby. With the San Francisco Giants, it's bye-bye. Mark, know, Mark knows by now I don't do serious. We do a lot of laughter. <laughs> but Fuller faculty and staff want to gift you a club membership as you make your way back to the Bay Area to the Giants games this season. You can pick your seats. You can invite friends. You can choose your games. Um, but this is just a small token of our gratitude and appreciation um, from faculty and staff. Oh, thank you. We love you. <laughs> we love you guys so much. We're so thankful for your leadership. And that should have been your. Don't, uh, don't miss the picture, though, of you guys in the seats cheering on your team. We apologize for the offensive photo. Yeah, but thank you so much. This is not enough, but we just hope you can enjoy your time together back in the Bay Area. <laughs> These tickets don't work, but you know. I should have had this all along. Gosh, this. <laughs> if I only had a glove on the other hand, yeah. Anyway, um, I think it's the benediction time, so I'll take this off. And, um, and just say thank you again so, so much for all of this. We are going back to Giants land. You might find it amusing, I did, uh, but perhaps those of you who are Dodgers fans won't. But um, on the day that we were moving in here, uh, Janet disappeared for like an hour, an hour and a half or something. I couldn't figure out where she went. And, 
and so forth. So eventually she comes back, and I said, where'd you go? She said, I went to face the enemy. I said, what does that mean? She said, she said, I just had to drive around Dodger Ballpark and like really come to terms with the fact that I was living in Dodger land. So yes, among other things, going back to the Bay Area, uh, reorients us to the orange color, which is part of our family definition. So let's stand for our benediction. Now to God who is able to do exceedingly abundantly, beyond all we could ask or even imagine according to the power that is at work within us, to God be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus and in fuller and through fuller, both now and forevermore. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. Okay, I'm just gonna yell, shout, yell or shout or okay, never mind. Um, I'm here to make the announcement that lunch is at noon. Um, we're a little bit before noon, so mingle, hang out, um, and um, yeah, just have a good time. But we'll see you over at Peyton 101 by noon, everyone, for lunchies. And also, wow, wow, that's it. Wow, I don't have any. Wow, thank you so much.
Requ